All right, and I guess uh, we're live there, Bernie. Awesome. Okay. We are live. Oh yeah, and switch back. Yes, we are. Hello, hello. Okay, awesome. Today we are joined by Shane and Shane, uh, New Liberty Under Attack, Vanu Podcast. Uh, how's it going, boys? It's going well. Glad to be here. Yeah, going great, man. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure to finally connect. It's been uh, been been following you for a couple of years. So yeah, I'm happy to, to be chatting with you tonight and to, uh, yeah, introduce my audience to, uh, I guess a whole new slew of topic. We haven't really talked about monoatomics much, so, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Absolutely. And so. yeah, that's, uh, kind of my claim to fame, I guess, is working with this stuff and trying it out. And this one right here is a monoatomic bismuth zinc combination, uh, that you can see going to the left there uh, and starting to condense at the bottom right and it's at the beginning of this electrolysis process that you'll always get the pure white unoxidized <clears throat> monoatomics uh, forming off of the decay of the anode side and uh, yeah it's it's been a fascinating journey uh, the potential uh, I guess is limitless. It, it seems like it's the building blocks of the universe and material and what nowadays is classified as metamaterials and nanotechnology and uh, superconductive material. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, yeah. the, all the legends of the past, right? The the mana, the monoatomic gold and uh, the demigods and everything else it's it's kind of trippy sometimes that uh, to really think about it and what uh, it actually could be yeah yeah most definitely most definitely well uh, if it's all right bernie if i could do a brief introduction i will release this to uh you know our obviously our Vani podcast audience i want to make sure they know what's what's going on here and, and i guess for the benefit of your audience too what we're, what we're doing here tonight um, but uh, yeah, this is, uh, I guess, uh, the newest episode of uh, the Vanu podcast, our newest installment of our Breakthrough Energy uh, for the Second Realm series, uh, number four to be precise. Uh, joining us, uh, I, we already, I guess, I already talked to him, but yeah, Blue Bueller here is our head of our, our Pazni Department of Energy. Uh, he's here at the consulate with us back there in the room behind me. Um, so yeah, we're, he's, uh, you know, building a lot of the stuff that we'll be talking about tonight, or at least some of it. Um, but yeah, my goal with this series is to introduce those who are unfamiliar uh, to the vast ocean of, of potentialities and to, to hone in on a few solutions coming to the fore uh, that can dramatically improve individual and community-based independence. Uh, things like using browns, gas, and hydrogen for fuel, uh, understanding and harnessing the energy abundant around us at all times, like Nikola Tesla, for instance, uh, mind-blowing anti-gravitics, monoatomics, and other experiments, uh, crystal power cells that run for years without a charge, and uh, different versions of breakthrough energy motors. Uh, Sky Huddleston's Bork engine, who we uh, interviewed for the first episode of the series, um, Sky Huddleston's Bork engine, uh, the Adams motor, um, which I guess your audience would be familiar with, and, and more than I'm certainly unfamiliar with, uh, and with the manufactured nonsense happening in the first realm, um, <clears throat> whether in the realm of health or energy, uh, it's time for the magic of monoatomics to become more commonplace, uh, and their use is actually you know, truly explored in our modern day and age. Uh, thankfully, our guest today, Bernie, the crypto alchemist, has been doing this sort of work on, on his YouTube channel for a number of years. Uh, some of the cross uh, myself in mid-2020, when I was getting into the work of Walter Russell and just getting, uh, getting my feet wet within this breakthrough energy space. Uh, Beyond Monoatomics, on his channel, you can also find discussions on, on a real history, uh, breakthrough energy, te energy technologies of the recent and distant past. And uh, really, guys, he's just a, a freedom pioneer in the science realm, someone, someone you want to follow. And I have to mention, as of late, uh, he and uh, Andreas Exertis, who um, I guess put together that uh, pretty, that uh, uh, very trippy um, AI video at the very beginning. Um, you guys have been putting out a, a real science series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys have been putting out a real science series uh, featuring guests like Jeremiah Pop, uh, Jeremy Reese, uh, the alien scientist. Uh, Matthew Reif, uh, the, I think, grandnephew of Royal Reif. Um, I actually have a Reif machine here at the Pazian Department of Health and Wellness, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, right back there. Really? And uh, more. So yeah, with, with, with uh, you know, things like machine? that, it's no surprise. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a legitimate Reif machine, but it's uh, the company, it's uh, Reif Machine Builders is the outfit that put it together. Um, and um, it's supposed to be working. I still have to get, uh, my Windows machine won't, won't uh, detect the frequency generator, and it might just be that machine. 
Um, so I, I have to try. I'm going to try on my Linux machine, but it's outside my techno technological capabilities. So I'm, I'm waiting for my tech guy to uh, have some time to work on that with me. But uh, yeah, we, we have one. Uh, All here right. Well, us. we're definitely going to have to have a Jeremiah I and you episode right away on all of that <laughs> as uh, <laughs> let's get that beauty fire <laughs> yeah so hopefully yeah that's that's definitely the goal and especially with um yeah the the, the guy that we that uh, you know donated to the to the wellness center um he uh he's he, he has a lot of you know like electromagnetic toys that he that are you know really good for really magical you know health tools but uh the rife machine he said it was not a toy um it was it works it works really 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 well um and then from hearing what uh, i guess from uh, from some real science episodes um it seems like that they just they, they work they work really well um and uh, i'm trying to deal with so-called type 1 diabetes and there's you know there's plenty of conditions uh, you know plenty of so-called diseases and imbalances that it helps with so um Hold on, I got a catch trying to break into the studio. <laughs> we have they a cat that tries that. to get everywhere that she's not supposed to. So you guys are in the same uh, building right now, right? Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have two chains together. That's phenomenal. <laughs> I know, right? The universe has a sense of humor. That's epic. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess That's why um, anyway, I go by um, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah, it gets very confusing. But um yeah, I guess to 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 move forward here, I I am excited to to talk to talk with you more Bernie. Obviously we'll get into monoatomics, uh, we'll get into uh, electroculture, which is something we're experimenting with uh, here this year. Um uh, here in your I guess uh, on our on our 22 acre homestead. Um and then uh yeah, lots of other cool stuff, maybe some brown's gas on main hydrogen and and things like that, but uh Anyway, Bernie, thanks so much for taking the time to talk, man. Uh, it's it's uh, you know welcome to the Vani podcast. It's uh, great to finally connect. Um, I guess uh, why don't you start for I know you might, your audience might be familiar with your path here, but um, yeah, what got you into uh, you know all these uh, all these topics? I mean, you've been doing it for a while, so yeah, tell us a bit about uh, your path here. Yeah, okay. So I've always been into weird science, the fringe sciences, the Tesla technology, um, like the paranormal research, the uh, otherly dimensional, but over unity a lot. And um, about 10 years ago, I started uh, participating in the KFSSI Keshi Foundation Institute, as well as um, the, oh my goodness, Resonance Academy with uh, Nassim Haramine. And uh, that really got me pushed into um starting to play with coils make some coils um and then especially with keshi what he called gans which is this uh acronym uh gas atom nano solid state so you're talking about the a gas atom so it's freely moving uh, but it's a nano microscopic uh solid state aka a monoatomic um element uh, and solid matter, which is uh, essentially plasma matter, uh, as he teaches and as uh, several others do, like uh, David Hudson and uh, his acronym for it, uh, ORMIS, uh, orbitally, oh my god, I always get Orbitally rearranged monoatomic elements, yeah. Thank I was a big you. fan of Hudson's yes. for a while. Yeah, right, like absolutely epic stuff there. And the thing is, is that uh, Hudson's way is the old uh, alchemical chemi chemistry process of separating uh, the metals and eroding them down into their pure uh, single atom monoatomic state, uh, this white matter. And that uh, when I started making it uh, with uh, Keshi's uh, teachings of the Gans, uh plasma essentially the same same breakdown and level of understanding as uh david hudson's and then uh i started reading sir isaac newton's uh recently publicly released and translated for the first time ever alchemy writings and started noticing that a lot of the results uh of my electrolysis and this armist scan stuff uh, was 
perfectly matching Sir Isaac Newton's seven states of alchemical metals and that uh, I was really onto something here. And uh, that's when I really started like paying attention to the different uh, states of the breakdown and the decay of the anode and the different um, nano coating layers on the cathodes, as well as these different nano crystalline layers uh, that will form uh, within the water or condensate afterwards. And uh, also the different nanotubes and structures that, that would form. And finally, the actual metals themselves uh, getting into this red, uh, red state of uh, material and that um, the metal itself, when it's uh, red, it turns pink and it's crystalline and it actually sh glimmers and shines. And that's when Sir Isaac Newton states that uh, metals can be transmutated from one metal to another. So uh, my next step of experiments is to get some signal generators and variax and start uh, putting in the resonant frequencies of metals once I have them into this state, uh, this crystalline state, which I've been able to pretty much master now and keep metals indefinitely in this uh, state, which uh, in a minute I'll demonstrate uh, copper coil fully in this pink state. And uh, yeah, it's uh, been quite the journey. I've been drinking the uh, colloidal water of the monoatomics. So that is the monoatomic is only ever the white material. If you get to this blue color, it's oxidized and it's instantly poisonous, you will die. That is why all these people that are like, oh, colloidal silver, and they're turning blue, they're actually consuming the oxidized poisonous version, poisonous version. getting heavy uh, metal okay. poisoning and dying. And that is not what you want to do. Uh, it has to be the pure white single monoatomic atom state that uh, you can see in being formed right here and that it's when you first plug it in and have it in the state this is when you'd actually and i uh, might as well do a live demonstration of harvesting it right now uh why not let's go for it let me just transfer the microphone I think that should give better sound over here. Can you hear me all right? Uh, yeah. Yep. Coming through loud and clear. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So when you have it in this pure, fluffy, white state, that is when you actually want to harvest it. And... What you can do is take like a turkey baster sort of thing mm -hmm. and suck it out from the bottom, putting it into another jar, collecting it from the top as well. And, and it's crucial to be doing it in this state because if you leave the electrolysis reaction running uh, for a period of over about three to six hours it'll eventually reach a state of decay where everything does start oxidizing as well as um forming other more complex compounds as well within it hmm. that uh, are all poisonous and turn into heavy metal poisoning once again stuff you don't want right so it's like the potential of this meta material is potentially limitless with good but it's equally dangerous if uh you get the wrong mm -hmm. chemical compound or process in it yeah and I, i'll mention for for the benefit of the, the podcast listeners we're doing he's doing a lot of demonstrations in this so if you're listening on the on the on the podcast feed um, definitely find the uh, find the video on Odyssey or or uh, YouTube or wherever wherever you like, um, but you'll definitely want to actually see this. Make a lot more sense, that's for sure. 
And so I will uh, leave this uh, jar here with the water uh, right on the camera so you'll be able to see all of the monoatomic material condense and uh, settle, at which point it then will look something like this at the bottom. Oh, it settles down there. Hmm. And that is what is rinsed and used. And we will move this guy out of the way. We actually sorry, I'm gonna put that guy there and try and move this other one up. But I will now plug in that has a much higher coil level should produce a lot more hydrogen off of its effects. There we go. So you can already see right here this level of clearing water and the monoatomic starting to settle to the bottom. As well as all of the hydrogen now coming off of the coils in this reaction. And so on this reaction, once again, it's zinc that is the anode that uh, is going to be breaking down into the monoatomic elements the most. And it's uh, some triple, triple solenoid coils, copper coils, uh, with a couple of ring neodymium magnets in them uh, that uh, I've got plugged in as the cathode side that is bubbling away, producing all of the uh, atomic hydrogen, I believe a lot of it is, especially when it's in that smaller state. Um, and sometimes you can even see it glisten. And I've, I've seen other videos of people putting in different frequencies to this reaction, different signals, and it's uh, literally creating some sono illuminescence and uh, the star in the jar all on its own. Uh, and then I'm sure you've seen the episodes with Jeremiah Pop where he puts in the higher voltage uh, and actually is transmuting the hydrogen into helium uh, yeah. and that star in the jar yes. reaction as well. Yes. And I think, didn't he use some sort of uh, spectrographic analysis to prove the presence of helium? um not yet that is what we are working on and that will be the next step okay i think there was like maybe uh, he did actually no. i could be wrong on that i could be mistaken i think he did i think you're actually yeah i think right. the presence like of a the... certain color indicated a certain element and i think he yeah, was I, indicated I as present. Right. I, I will have to ask jeremiah on that and get clarification and either yeah. way, it is something that uh, we definitely will be doing when we get a more sustained reaction. Uh, we need higher variax uh, to be able to pull off the reaction stably, where his quick demonstration was just using a couple of supercapacitors to power it and uh, wasn't sustaining the full white plasma arc required for the atomic hydrogen to helium transmutation reaction. But uh, for agricultural and electroculture aspects and uh, the fact that uh, last year I was able to grow a six foot lettuce plant with some of the monoatomic gold, mm -hmm. uh, this year I've got a whole nother level planned of experiments with uh, the different colloidal waters and monoatomics. So now you can see that it's really starting to settle, the water's clearing. And since I'm using salt water uh, in these reactions, about 15% salt per liter of water, um, I'll have to rinse it nine times to get all the salt out of it. And each time you let it settle essentially for a day for this material uh, to 
fully settle at the bottom, like uh, this monoatomic gold uh, is. And then um, afterwards, that is what uh, you call the colloidal gold or silver or zinc water that uh, I then use, uh, never the actual material at the bottom. Interesting. Interesting. So, so there's a, so an anode and a cathode, and then basically whatever metal. Um, and then um, I think I've heard you mention. Um, well, I guess you, you've used different, you've tried different types of waters and stuff with this with these reactions. Is there any difference between like um, if you use salt water or distilled water or anything like that? So is it, is it, you know, yeah, for official experiments, I do use distilled water. And uh, for anyone doing official scientific experiments, of course, use distilled water first. And foremost, uh, the first time that you try a process, uh, but I've noticed over time that a very, very little difference whatsoever from my normal tap water compared to distilled when making uh, these monoatomics. That said, I'm up in uh, Canada, close to the Rocky Mountains, where there's fresh, very clean, fresh drinking water. If you're somewhere where you've got like a polluted water base or something, then uh, definitely you want to be using distilled water or something else like uh, spring water or whatnot. Um, let's see here. And yeah, now you can start seeing the monoatomics also forming off of uh, the zinc anode here and collecting up top. And that uh, it's always the anode that uh, breaks down into the, these monoatomic matter here and uh so this uh monoatomic gold silver combination here this is will be the wow. second time that i'm rinsing it so i will now well first you can see all the hydrogen atomic hydrogen still bubbling up through it and this is the second time it's been rinsed and settled now um so i'm going to empty the water out of it uh, right now, and then you will be able to see how it also fluffs up and the process of rinsing uh, this material. And yeah, it's, amazing, it's amazing what those turn into. The Keshi Foundation actually does a lot of documentation and trials and testimonials of where people will use this salt water that comes out of it uh, in baths to bathe in and uh, whatnot, and that uh, there's potential beneficial effects. But at the same time, you could equally poison yourself, so don't try any of this at home. This is not health advice. Don't <laughs> kill yourself. It's just being experimented with in safe environments. <laughs> yeah. Now I've seen the experiments where they get the the white fluffy, you know, powder at the end. But um, and I know that the metals in their oxidized states are usually like green and blue. But I've never seen the pink or the gold like this before. So this monoatomic gold was actually also nano gold that uh, I was able to get settle where half the time the extra gold dissolved in the water will crystallize like it did here in this one where as you shine a light you can kind of see the gold flake and it's this the crystalline gold layer that uh came out of the reaction in the water uh, where instead of it leaving it to settle on the outside and crystallize I was able to actually add it into some of the monoatomic uh, silver and gold that I had harvested earlier and then uh, mixed it with the white fluffy stuff and it turned it uh, completely into this gold colored mixture. So this this one's a whole new nano gold monoatomic gold mm. uh, experiment trial that uh, I will be doing some of the electroculture out of this year. And once again, you can see the exclusion zone forming as it uh, settles, 
And why I keep pointing out these exclusion zones is that a lot of the time in the reactions themselves, like, <clears throat> like in this guy right here, you can see that uh, it actually formed its own exclusion layer an inch from the bottom, and it has a layer of its own structured monoatomic in between the two, and then going up from built from where the anode was originally uh, in the monoatomic sink that I made yesterday. And that they make these tubulars, the nanotubes. Interesting. Yeah, that's what I noticed. The structures that they, I guess, form into are crazy. So now Does that grow upward from the surface? To the very bottom of uh, the jar there. As is the gold starting to uh, settle. So I will pour the settled salt water back into the original reaction jar so that it will start making some more. And thus uh, saving the salt water and reusing it uh, instead of just rinsing and washing it away. Uh, it is always good to let the material settle and be able to reuse it as best as possible. Yeah. <clears throat> Amazing. So, so obviously the electrolysis, we're, we're familiar with, um, with Brown's gas and hydrogen. Um, so like there's obviously the electrolysis process in there. Um, and obviously one of the prospects for that is energy, um, obviously with, with various facts, with various factors, but, um, is there, are there any, are there any energy potentialities with, with, uh, I guess, monotomics in the sense that you're working with them, um, that you're investigating uh, per se? Yeah. So I really do want to get into, uh, further research and development. Uh, I've started like uh, with producing the hydrogen and the gases, uh, ways of starting to collect it. And that uh, we really are trying to get uh, access to a mass spectrometer to be able to start seeing what exactly we're working with as far as the transmutations and stuff. Uh, cause yeah, like Brown's gas, it's like, is it HHO mist? Is it H4? Is it like HHO plasma? Is it atomic hydrogen? There's so many questions with yeah. it that needs to From be what resolved I and tried. And that's each one is a potential like uh meta material and game changer all on its own. So it's just a right. matter of trying to figure out what's what. Uh, I've also got a couple of um, misters, like the oil mister thingies, whatever they're called, the essential oil thing, but whatever, they they turn that yeah. water into that HHO mist, the electrolyzers, I guess it's called, isn't it? I don't know. Um, anyway. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> the, from uh, what I understand, water after mist. talking to George Wiseman, yeah. Um, Brown's gas contains at least six different gases, which would be uh, monoatomic hydrogen, uh, diatomic H2, um, and then monoatomic oxygen, and then diatomic O2, and then there's two forms of water, which is regular vapor and the water plasma. So I'm showing right here, this was a 10 gram, uh, 24 karat gold bar that uh, was eroded down that turned into the gold that was used in this uh, monoatomic solution. So when I'm claiming it's monoatomic gold, I'm literally eroding uh, mono physical gold. When I'm claiming it's monoatomic silver, I'm physically eroding pure 99 silver. You know, like I'm using using the real metals for the real using good coins uh, materials, right? Like the pure copper for for it too, right? So it's like I have an ounce for ounce. 
uh, consistent um, materials that I'm using in these reactions uh, and the materials that I'm calling each of them. And that it's have been able to get uh, all of those metals that I've just shown, gold, silver, copper, as well as the zinc, the bismuth, um, nickel, aluminum, iron, uh, and a few more, uh, all into this pure white monoatomic state that uh, is formed at the beginning of these reactions. And that you can again now see more forming there. And uh, that Isaac Newton states all metals can be broken down into their most basic mecular matter, uh, this white powder, he states. And that all these other ancient alchemists speak of uh, this edible, consumable, consume consumable white powdered edible gold that uh, was from the ancients and that was like a lost magic super healing material and that uh, some of I believe the philosopher's stone could be a form of this monoatomic gold or monoatomic gold silver combination or something along that lines uh, from my research it seems to be that way especially as they use a lot of depictions calling the philosopher's stone are two snakes going into a pond, one with uh, the head of a sun and one with the head of a moon. And uh, the moon is silver and the sun is gold, of course, and the serpents would be your positive, negative anode current uh, going in and out of that reaction and it encoding how to make this monoatomic material. Yeah, that's definitely not a sign of Newton that uh, that I ever heard about. Um, but yeah, yeah so a, lot, a lot of those folks were, you know, big, big into, you know, big, big alchemists. Yeah. Yeah, it was over a million word writing, apparently, or something that's been released. That it was never before public, before like ten years ago or something, when it was sold at auction and then uh, finally translated and released. And then there's like another million of his so-called religious, but it's like more numerical and astrology and ph philosophical writings that uh, were also released at the same time and uh, mm -hmm. now also being translated. A whole new level yeah. of genius that we were never able to see or experience before. amazing it's amazing so let me get your your thoughts on on something here bernie one of our um i guess the same guy who um which we were talking about i think a pre-show but that, that used the that tests out the browns gas torch um on the aqua here um a couple years ago he was talking about one one aspect of vanu is liberated lifestyle so like living on a sailboat is one of those things and he had this idea, and I'm not sure he had it fully fleshed out himself a couple of years ago. His it understanding has developed a lot since then, too. But I guess his general idea was, um, yeah, I guess some sort of electrolysis process generating generating ormus from the ocean um, for you know, an, like an entrepreneurial venture. And then also using that as as like a basis for um, basically free energy for the boat. Um, I don't know. What, what do you think about that? I couldn't agree more with that. Like the ocean is an endless source of free energy, uh, whether it's hydrogen, whether it's waves, whether, you know, like there, it's, there's just so many electrical differentials. Like it's the largest battery uh, in our existence potential is the ocean. And uh, like there's countless ways to harness it. So, yeah, the more people develop it, the better. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And 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 this brings to, to mind something else, I guess, another potential I thought of with, uh, and I think you guys talked about it in your last, um, but it's, it's been something that's been on my mind because we have this antenna out here that it's like 50 foot antenna, maybe it's 50 feet. I'm not good with estimating numbers, but um, it's this tall ass antenna. And um, I, I, I'm pretty sure like you could you could do like you could have like a, obviously just like in the ocean. Um, I don't remember what the ocean thermal 
um, some sort of ocean thermal energy system where you basically utilize the differential in temperatures in the ocean. Obviously, you can do the same thing above, you know, above water too. Um, where like you attach an energy balloon, or I guess like an, not energy yeah, balloon, right? balloon. The balloon off the... I think is the perfect solution. Yeah, one going down below into the ocean and one going up into the air. Like we'll combine them. Yeah, uh, that's some <laughs> serious uh, differential potential. You know, like it needs to be explored. And I think that in the past they might have uh, used that sort of uh, energy technology. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. So um, I guess in terms of the monoatomics or um, I guess, uh, yeah, in terms so of the monoatomics, is there any, anything else you want to show switch us? switch cameras here and mm -hmm. microphones for one sec. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, those are some cool looking jars. Yeah, a little whole a whole uh, lot better of understanding than I did when I saw them a few years ago. Yeah, definitely. All right, it's like, man, half half the comments of people the first time they see the jars are like, "Are you cooking meth?" I'm like, "Oh my god, I freaking hate that drug!" Like, shut the hell up. No, no, it is not. And then it's like my uh, ex girlfriend from when I first got into this stuff uh like save her soul poor girl was just like he's lost his mind he's staring into buckets of rust for like two years what the hell is going on <laughs> uh, there's, there's some pretty cool stuff that happens and uh some of it uh is the what jared polak i believe his name is out of washington state university or something the uh fourth state of water and what he calls exclusion zones or the easy zones. And uh, I notice them all the time in the different layers of uh, monoatomics and uh, the different states of transmutational metals. And uh, in these pictures, you can see the yellow, the reds, the blue, the greens, and uh, those are each one of Sir Isaac Newton's transmutational states of metal and uh, they call red the mer mercury state, blue oxidized state, obviously, um, the yellow the sulfuric state, and I've been able to reproduce all of them out of pretty much every metal uh, that I use and experiment with on the anode sides. I guess that's not going to look in the window, is it? Um, and the pink crystalline state, this one here, see how yeah. fluffy it is? That was just a copper screw and it puffed out into this red material and the pink crystalline material. And that reminds me that I will also share a live demo of that in a second here. But uh, Jeremy Reese uh, recently just did an episode on red material or red meta material and that it's this hydroxide that uh, forms with these metals and uh, is, is able to super and, uh, they were needing massive pressure for it and I believe that uh, I have probably a cheaper better way with uh, these metals, if I when I'm keeping them in these red states, just with a little bit of current or submersed in the monoatomic materials themselves, uh, at no pressure and no temperature. Uh, let's see if I can find a better picture. Sadly, no camera does it justice to like see them actually sparkle in this pink red state. So you've gotten it to stay stable in the pink state? Yeah, uh, here, I guess I can show that right now. So that's essentially what you're seeing right here in that jar. It's in that pink fluffy state, but we can go 
wants you back to this there guess that camera is probably higher depth oh how's my sound did i switch the sound back is my sound low right now sounds good sounds good okay it sounds, perfect. Yeah, sounds good mm -hmm. so when one of these electrolysis alchemy jar reactions are sealed but kept in like a oxidized active state that's when the metal itself when submersed in the salt water or the monoatomics is able to stay in that pink crystalline state there and that is all copper wire pure copper that you see in this pink pure mm -hmm. pink red state mm. and sorry it's yeah it doesn't capture the glimmer like it should but it's that uh when you get metals extremely hot you get them into that red colored glowing this pink crystal is well as isaac newton states the seventh state of transmutational metal and when they can be transmutated so i yeah. just find the parallels of it absolutely fascinating yeah it definitely matches up And then uh, I'll leave it out here to see, uh, to demonstrate for a few minutes, right on the tip, if it focuses, it might actually show the crystal. Doesn't, it never captures it on camera, like with the human eye, but uh, you'll start seeing that it actually is gonna oxidize and turn uh, green and then, a blue shell around the metal and uh, then mm -hmm. it'll go back from this pink crystal state into the hard normal copper metal state uh, with oh, wow. a blue oxidized outer shell that has eroded down but that the inner metal itself goes back into this normal uh, copper solid state hmm. that's interesting trying to find some more red state for you to see uh, maybe just, yeah. and the dog is excited so in this jar what's fascinating is that it's even got a seal at the top that uh, has formed where it's like crystallized nano layer uh, above or the at the water line that uh, I moved this jar like four or five times over five, six years since I first made it. And you can see like how the bubbles cracked where they're green now and it broke and then it's reformed and recrystallized uh, each time. Hmm keeping itself active uh, in it. Uh, there's some more red state uh, copper coils. So this one was, oops, that one, that guy there, uh, is two triple solenoid copper coils that have uh, two insulated copper wires connecting the tips of each of them to each other. One sum half submerged at the top, one fully submerged at the bottom. The power differential created electrolysis in it where it uh, was bubbling 
sealed solid for six months before it stopped and uh, it forms a layer of monoatomics in the bottom out of that reaction and uh, yeah it, it was quite interesting that it was self-sufficient for six months time in there what was uh, the so power okay. supply there was no power supply at all just the coils oh, wow. connected to each other wow and yeah so that's a huge thing that i've since uh, experimented more with uh, especially creating uh, iron core ferrite, like a nail, uh, as the center, and then uh, zinc or aluminum, uh, usually tin foil wrap around it, and then a copper wire coil solenoid around that as the uh, anode sides of these cells that I'm making and experimenting with, uh, that uh, with no power source connected. Uh, produce hydrogen out of them uh, for like wow. six months straight. So one outside has been going almost a year, uh, only stopping a bit when it freezes, but still seems like it's actually still working uh, below it, or er, below the ice level. Yeah, that sounds like some over unity hydrogen to me. Yeah, and that uh, reminds me of the one where Jeremiah did with the uh, atomic hydrogen to helium, the amount of uh, heat energy of the boiling water reaction coming out uh, compared to the small amounts of electrical current going in, uh, he also suspected was an overunity reaction. Yeah. That's uh, cold fusion, right? Yes, sir. Or yeah. what they prefer calling LENR, low energy nuclear reactions. Uh, right. Because for whatever reason, they gave cold fusion a horrible stigma when they discredited or uh, intentionally disgraced, not actually discredited, uh, Martin Fleischmann Pond's original cold fusion reaction discoveries right i still like to call it cold fusion me too a hundred percent i prefer the term it's the way to be it's cold fusion it's it's what it is <laughs> yep and it's cool cold fusion yeah. is cool all right let's see yeah Trying to find also so something really interesting I noticed and found was the relation of uh, silver and making monoatomic silver to the position of the moon, which the alchemists uh, tied to silver, and that when it was a full moon, there would, it produces a lot of uh, silver monatomic silver and when it's a new empty moon uh it barely produces anything at all and then and i tested it uh on a live oh my goodness uh occulting of the moon um what the heck is it called the uh, eclipse a lunar eclipse uh where the moon is full but then it's eclipsed and cut out zero. And I did this on the uh, Alien Scientist channel where it was producing a whole bunch. And then as it eclipsed, it stopped producing. And then uh, as it subdued and went back to normal, it was producing again. And literally it's tied to the amount of light coming off to the moon, the amount of uh, monoatomic silver that uh, comes out of it. So you're doing some biodynamic monoatomics then, sounds like. You're verifying the biodynamic monoatomics, rather. I, um, I guess so, right? Like, And it was just from leaving the uh, process running for a matter of a couple of months' time and noticing it going like more and less, more and less. And then there was a super moon uh, one day and it completely filled the entire uh bin with monoatomic silver and that's when i realized that uh, it was 100 percent tied to the moon 
<clears throat> Amazing. Yeah. So Bernie, was there, I guess there anything else on monatomics that, that, that uh, you think we need to work in? I mean, we, we covered, we definitely covered some basics of it and you walk us through some, some demos and, and some different results and, and what it can do. But uh, yeah, any, any other, any, anything else cool you'd like to show us that, that, that uh, you stumbled across? Yeah, so this, uh, some pictures here of uh, one of the first times I made monatomic copper silver combination and I was using a Keshi Magrav coil, which is triple solenoid coil within itself. And uh, it was kind of cool how it, it turned a uh, green layer of like oxidized and then an upper white layer of monoatomic. And I don't know, it just looked like it came alive and it's always alive. And ever since then, it's like, you'll see these nanotubes grow and structures in the water like stalactites, stalagmites, and the different states of uh, red, yellow. Okay, yeah, so the sulfur state, it will turn yellow off the anode side when you cut the cathode uh, feed. So if you create it double negative, I think, the reaction or something like that, it automatically goes from producing monoatomic white material to everything that was monoatomic white simultaneously turns yellow into this complete yellow state. Uh, they call it the sulfur state in the ancient alchemical writings. I don't have a mass spectrometer to uh, test my own yellow materials that uh, got into that sulfuric state yet but uh i i believe yeah that that's, that's a hurdle for us too we, we'd like we'd like to get reaction. one of those. right like yeah i almost wonder uh, if the different colors represent the different different levels of reduction and oxidation like the presence or absence of electrons yeah that's uh actually you're probably 100 percent correct on that and uh I, that's a really good way to look at it. I think you're 100% right. And that ties into the hydride part of the red material that uh, they recently created or whatnot. Yeah, I'm hydride's very interesting. Um, a lot of when you produce Brown's gas, some of the monoatomic hydrogen is in the hydride form. Right, so I know there's so much to it. The the hydrogen and the oxygen compounds. It's it's fascinating stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so those let's... those nanotubules Sorry. or whatever, those white things that grow, um, do they grow upward oh. and do they grow from the surface of the water? Yeah, they grow both uh, upward and downward, and uh, it's also out of the oxidized materials, the hydroxidized, um, like they pretty much every structure or material compound state of transmutational metals, they call it. Uh, it's uh, whether it's the blue oxidized or like the black carbon or red mechelular, yellow sulfuric, um all seem to have the same sort of reaction sorry i got a little distracted while yeah, I was trying okay. to i do believe they but, probably are all the same like if you started with one element and they probably are the same element just in different states of oxidation however some of yeah. those are in better balance for transmutation a hundred percent because it's like i've been able to use copper on copper of nothing else and it turns like i've got them in blue in red in yellow like all seven of the colors combined produced just off of that reaction with where it's just copper and copper nothing else has changed and the distilled distilled water so it's that it has to be and that uh, the anode will decay away into each of those colors as it gets closer and closer to the red pink final state. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm trying to see if I can get 
little demo video to play, but don't think it wants to work. Oh, maybe. Yes, actually, I think it is going to work. So this one. Oh, come on. Stupid thing. Why is it? Oh, there we go. Uh, are you, yeah, look at how much hydrogen and oxygen are coming off of this and how much it is bubbling. And there's no power going into this reaction at all right now. It's been disconnected. Not putting any current into that. There's no current into that at all. I've wow. gotten the metals into this red state uh, where they're just that reactive and that it's decaying. And then also the black nano-coated state uh, it, when it reaches is this symbiotic state on the anode side that happens but that uh, i disconnected the wires and put them away into this uh separate jar of salt water uh with some of the eroding aluminum still at the base and that it's just bubbling like nutty like that still wow and it goes on like did this, you start like, with distilled water or was hours. there like an electrolyte uh, salt. There's a salt in it. Salt. Salt water. Okay. Yeah. So you can totally and generate. That, uh, can see I guess hydrogen or power for the red state. Hmm. Yeah, and see that the bottom is maroonish color and then i believe that was aluminum that i got into that red state where it's bubbling like nuts like that and it was reactive for about six days that it would just bubbled non-stop like this when i get aluminum into the red state There. Yeah. This one's just cool as it shows like the galaxy shaped sort of uh, spirals with torus fields that uh, form. You see the different uh, exclusion zone layers of this monoatomic uh, silver bismuth combination here. So it's like there's these bands coming back in. And then it's also spitting out the straight monoatomic materials here. And then uh, there's different layers of uh, just pure water as well as the monoatomics in it. Interesting. Yeah, you can see the bands in there. Uh, I think you've got a better one out of here, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. There's like clouds floating over some layers of the bands, so like the bands are underneath, the clouds are up higher, so it's going in separate different directions on different layers of the water. Mm. <laughs> Also, the uh, lid here, how it goes back to the very center. Very, very strange. Mm -hmm. It's found this magnetic center in the very center of it all. Some wild stuff happened in that, in that container, that's for sure. Right? Like it's its own little galaxy. It's kind of, it's, I just love watching this video. <laughs> <laughs> Want to recreate this one again for sure. <laughs> it's uh, pretty epic. And uh, bismuth, the monoatomic bismuth, was always uh, rumored to have anti gravitic properties. So, uh, yeah, it, it's 
the, there's so much more work and research and real science that needs to go into these metamaterials and uh, get it actually tested and developed and utilized because I've seen patents for these limitless batteries we call liquid metal batteries. And then you look at the patent that's, oh, through electrolysis, they make this monoatomic goo. That uh, that's exactly it. So, okay, let's do something with this stuff. It's yeah. You read my mind. So that so that's essentially when, when they're talking about and I I guess I wasn't familiar with the term metamaterials, but that's what they're talking about is essentially just they're, they're doing what um, whether you want to whether you want to call it, uh, you know, transmutation or, you know, you know, electrolysis via, um, you know, via monoatomics or whatever, like this is what they're, you know, they're doing for these metamaterials then. Absolutely. Wow. And now, yeah, now you can see more of that. Uh, monoatomic uh, zinc forming there in the middle uh, reaction, as well as, uh, 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 go move the camera here a little bit better to see, or yeah, here you can see uh, that all of the monoatomic material off the first rinse usually floats. So on the left-hand jar here, you can see that the top uh, inch there is that full layer of monoatomic material. And then the exclusion zone is uh, the rest of the jar. And uh, why is that? You know, it seems like there's these different buoyancies and electromagnetic fields within all of these materials that uh, defy our modern understanding of gravity slash buoyancy slash uh, how matter interacts and moves and states and self-organizes as well as a big part of it. Yeah. Uh, oh, let's see that guy there. And now also you can see that one formed a whole bunch too. And one last part that I will show, although I don't know. Oops. If my blood is still alive, um, eh, maybe. Sorry, I harvested a little blood a few days ago for this demo, um, as I don't really want to cut myself right now for fresh blood. Hopefully this will do and the same reaction will happen. But uh, it was something taught by Keshi that uh, on the cathode side, it will start... Uh, reproducing your amino acids essentially your dna and your nano uh resident plasma material that is essentially your own monoatomic cellular structure as well as your resonant frequency uh structured material and it should start bubbling now off the cathode side, a whole bunch above the water level instead of uh, below the water level. And that will specifically be uh, my own genetic material being replicated by these reactions. And uh, it needs more, it's, Every flake is formed with every atomic hydrogen reaction that is made within uh, the electrolysis reaction. So this cathode is very weak on its bubbling. So I'm going to also pour some into this one. And uh, we should see it uh, activate a lot quicker. So silly basic question. So you've got anodes and cathodes there. There's something you're um, something you're using for to put, you know, a pulse of electricity or something through there. What are you using for your power? Okay, like, all I am question. using is a very simple, uh, 
almost pitiful ghetto USB block. Oops, connection right. Oh, oh, there we go. That right there. Uh, just okay. I literally sliced the end of a U micro USB phone charger and uh, powered into a five volts little USB block to connect into it. Okay, I like it. Just, just curious. Cool. Uh, let's see if we can get that. It just got a whole lot more cloudy in there. And uh, we'll start to see the bubbles rising up more off of it. Uh, I should have done that demonstration earlier on as there's already a mass amount of monoatomic material that was caught at the top uh, that's from the zinc that it's not as easy to see as had I done it at the very beginning of the reactions. But uh, as... Uh, we leave her for a few minutes. It will become more and more noticeable. So one thing that uh, Keshi had also taught with his Magrav coils uh, is that you nano coat them which is breaking down the outer covalent bonds of your solid material into a single remaining bond of like copper, for instance, on the copper coil. And then it's then able to interact with the monoatomic plasma state materials all the more. So then when you coat these coils, these nano-coated coils in the monoatomics, as well as with uh, your RNA or mRNA um, oh my, amino acid material that is uh, formed off the cathode side, and then pulse energy through the coils, the field that it's creating is going to be on that same electric bioelectrical energy field as your own cellular structures that uh, were coated and covered in it with the monoatomic elements. <clears throat> yeah, lots of thoughts. <laughs> wow. Indeed, right? Like, there's just rabbit hole after rabbit hole of possibilities after possibilities. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, most certainly, most certainly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I guess uh, we still got to talk about electroculture too, because I I know you're you're big into that, and we're about to to start our first experiment with that. So I want to make sure we talk about that some, um, and also just touch on crystal power cells. Um, so as I mentioned in the in the in the intro, even like even if we're not talking about you know like taking a home set off grid or you know big a big a, a big um application like that. Um, even small app, small applications for homesteads, like powering a water pump or um, like a deicer for a ruminant water thing, like like because I don't want to have extension cords running around the property. That's ridiculous. Um, and like the like the crystal power cells provide a lot of a lot of opportunities. So in, anyway, I guess um, I, I doubt I don't want to cut off the monoatomic stuff. This is this is amazing. Um, but was there anything else anything else we we wanted to cover in that realm before I before yeah I ab forward? absolutely so. Um... Uh, let me load maybe a little video of the crystal power cells that uh, we recorded with uh, the Hutchinsons here. And from there, I will go out into my outside lab and show what I'm working on with that. Amazing. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah, we've been interested in ways of, uh, well, I've especially generating Brown's gas either more efficiently or with almost, I guess, no current is possible as well. But um, yeah, I was curious whether a crystal battery 
uh, potentially the same size as say like a 12 volt battery could have like a greater capacity and probably be used as like a power source for an industrial type Brown's gas generator. Right, quite possibly. And I I don't see why not. Like that would be, is essentially part of the goal of what uh, I have in mind with it. Uh, where my first step is going to be like powering like <clears throat> LED lights, like your Christmas lights, solar lights, stuff like that with these batteries, and then the first gens with them, and then uh, the second and third generation uh, with uh, wiring them in series and uh, advancing them each way as we can uh, in our working groups to power as much individual appliances and like uh, pieces of useful equipment as possible, right? That uh, every single one you then build and connect to something should essentially uh, keep running green free energy uh, for you and keeping that light or that pump active and working for you forever at yeah. no cost. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah. It's a, it's a crazy possibility. It really is. And it's one of our top, uh, top priorities and projects that, uh, we are working on, uh, in our group here with, uh, real science group, the year of the coil, uh, group as well as essentially, uh, also the APEC uh, community all in one together that, uh, that's come together and with what we're doing it's pretty awesome pretty epic our next yeah. uh, episode with them here will be in a couple of weeks and let's see did it work uh i'm just loading the video on twitter so we don't have any ads when i play it i absolutely love this elon has created a hack that screws over google that's blocks their own ads. It's pretty funny. It's like you watch uh, YouTube videos through YouTube, you have to watch ads. You watch videos Twitter, no ads. So here's Nancy and uh, John explaining the crystal battery a little bit. That's, that's uh, here Um, so in uh, much, uh, so in this little guy right here, that's yeah. silver jewelry. You all things. Oh. So I had too much fun with those little gold screws. But um, it, 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 gold's problematic for his fraction of it. Building it to work and building them. It's, uh, copper and aluminum is a good place to start for the average person. Right. Um, in this little cell here, though, uh, what do you do? You have the salts in there as well? Yes. That's, that's a piece of aluminum, and I've got a piece of black electrical tape over there just holding it together. Nice. So, it's just a folded over piece of aluminum. And, and inside of the screw is the um, compound. It's. And the average compound you're using is um, Rochelle salts with. Uh, Cream, the tartar. Rochelle salts is cream of tartar. Oh, it is cream tartar, and then uh, some sugar and calcium carbonate, or is the calcium carbonate the Rochelle salts? Okay, so um, I gave the basic stuff here the last show. You want me to do it again? Yes, please, just for a refresher for the new people in here and. Uh, myself as well as i wrote it down but i need to actually go out and buy these things i'm sorry uh, for the next one i will have all the materials needed 
Okay, so you're looking at two parts prima tartar, and you can get um, bigger containers of it on Amazon. I got like a bag of it for 20 bucks, a prima tartar. And so uh, it's like a two pound bag or something. So two parts, you know, so. So Hopefully everybody can remember the cream of tartar, right? Oh. <laughs> Which is also Rochelle salt. No, Rochelle salt is cream of tartar and baking soda. So okay. Rochelle salt is two parts cream of tartar, one part baking soda. I understand now. Okay. And then take one half part of Epsom salts. Okay. And then take one quarter part white sugar. If, if you want to make the putty, if you don't want to make the putty, leave out the sugar. If you don't put the sugar in, you got about, uh, oh, 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds to pour that shit and get it in together. If you have the putty, You've got much more, a lot longer time to work and play with it, and you can make a rope out of it, do whatever you want with it. So, are, are, are we going to be working on uh, No brain, not extra quarter parts white sugar to but keep it in the taffy form where it's mold. Malleable, moldable, and that you're able to continue using it right. as opposed to it solidifying. Yeah, you get it into like a stainless steel saucepan. You know, you, that's not the short ones that you fry your grilled cheese on. You want something that's a thicker pot pan, you know, and you, you can do it right there on your stove. And you put it on a low temperature on your stove and put in um, the same amount of water as you did sugar. So like your quarter cup and, you know, distilled water is best when you're not screwing around with fluoride and shit, you know, in your stuff. So just put a quarter, you know, your quarter portion, if you're going to do one cup, one, you know, if you're doing cup portions, it's a quarter cup. And it's going to um, bubble up a lot when you add that water. So that, that no salt that guy's using is potassium, which um, the um, uh, cream of tartar is actually potassium. So, anyway. Um, uh, 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 so that's somebody else's stuff that they're doing. Now, I mean, as I said, it whatever it is that, that you're using in between these two metals, what how I got that um, that little screw to work. I mean, I used to I was using pins on a circuit board, um, little gold pins on these little breadboards, you know, these circuit boards that my my brother had, and I was getting over a volt off of each of those little pins. So I knew that was going to work, but um, when I came up with the putty, all you have to do is take that putty and you can make a little rope out of it and swing it around, whatever you got, and squish it in there and put your foil on it. So it's up to you if you want to use the sugar and it doesn't really change the, the amount of volts. I mean, it's carbon and hey, you know, who doesn't like the horror battle on, right? So. Anyway, um, I don't know what we're watching here. Somebody else's. Oh, yeah, this is the laser saber video that uh, I've got on right now that uh, his videos of making it. So you're saying this is a bit different mix that he uses, so it's not as good of um, results as the ones that uh, the instructions that you've given the. Um, I don't know. Adding the I, I, I've not found this thing. Um, I know I look at the amount of compound that he's using is just ordinarily huge. It's like way too much. What I mean, we have. Um,
All right. Sorry, stop there. Just uh, I'm gonna be mm -hmm. outside here in two seconds and can show from there. Sure. <clears throat> All right. So now we're gonna get a uh, live demo of the or something outdoor. So we'll we'll see. Definitely. That's pretty cool jacket he's got too. <laughs> Uh huh. In the outdoor lab. Too many Bernies, but at least we got a dog. It's T2. Hi, T2. <laughs> My former vending tent turned science lab. So, uh, this summer, I am hoping to start uh, messing around with some motors, some batteries, some alternators. Uh, and getting my solar panels hooked up as well to, uh, you know, utilizing that green free energy as well as uh, these crystal energy batteries. Uh, I also got a couple of extra microwaves to experiment with putting some monoatomics into, which should be quite uh, interesting and fascinating results. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, you don't want to really do that within your own home. So, uh we got them out maybe, here. Maybe, we get leave the tent for that one. Food. Yeah, right? Like, and, uh, yeah, for the crystal battery cells, uh, I'm going with uh, using pop cans as the aluminum and uh, a shell with uh, uh, pop bottles, and then I'm going to be cutting up copper pipe as well. But for now, I have some... Uh, copper coins uh, that I'll be mixing in with the Rochelle Salt uh, Cream of Tartar um, crystal battery mix that the Hutchinsons talk about and uh, are using and that uh, several in our community like Charlie has built and uh, yeah, do a whole bunch of different version twos from the get-go with it and uh, combine it in with like my salt water electrolysis uh, battery experiments and designs that I've been messing around with that uh, there's a whole series of videos on throughout my YouTube channels. Yeah, yeah. the saltwater battery is kind of a new one for me. But so is the crystal battery, and I'm really excited about that too. So it started out with like some of my original electrolysis experiments being moved outside uh, when I moved and then noticing that uh, when they're frozen in the great Canadian minus 35 winters that uh, when I plug it in once again just to old phone charger five volts going in that uh, the ice blocks would start bubbling and uh, producing hydrogen and melting uh, water and producing the hydrogen in the middle of the winter and uh, then this year I connected a couple of my cells uh, using aluminum iron ferrite uh, nail core uh, aluminum outer shell and then uh, also copper coil solenoid around them that uh, as electrodes that they would self orient a anode that would start producing monoatomics but also bubbling producing hydrogen all on its own and that uh, they've been it was running for six months straight all spring summer and fall last year uh, continuously producing hydrogen bubbling uh, until it froze and even now you can see like there's still the hydrogen frozen down underneath it uh, right now Awesome. So it, it's just like, it's so easy that and limitless, it, it needs to be developed. And uh, I really want to see more of your guys' uh, work with the hydrogen, getting the torch going and stuff like that, and uh, what you guys are working with mm -hmm. right now and stuff. Yeah. So I guess when it comes to, you know, generating your own power efficiently, I, I think Brown's gas is a great way to do that, but we still have to 
try to find ways to catalyze that to the point of perhaps over unity. And it looks like you're getting pretty close with some of these that are kind of running on their own there. Um, but, and then we also want to learn how to store Brown's gas as well. And I recently talked to George Wiseman about that and he so, seems to think I mean, it's a bad idea, but um, I'm going to build sort of. Uh, with doing, sorry, just to cut you off on that regard is with uh, the bat, like using the bottles, you take the tops and put them around the cathode side. So then you're going to start funneling the hydrogen gas up and then, uh, I've got uh, like the bigger water jugs to start trying to collect it with and stuff like that. And okay. I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure slowly figuring some stuff out. But uh, do I've, continue. Uh, I've seen a design that kind of looks like a gravity bong, and it's got a couple of valves on top, and you can run a couple of tubes to it. And uh, as long as there's more pressure than atmospheric pressure, it will fill up, and then you can turn the, the yeah, outlet valve yeah, off, and it will hold the gas. Totally. Oh. Yeah, I don't need those. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. So I just cut it halfway. There we go. Yeah. That's making sense. Ver version two coming out soon. Yeah, it's called a gasometer. And I first got this idea from uh, Nighthawk and Lights channel. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's got a lot of do it yourself, like home projects that uh, I think so, I, you yeah. know, I'm trying to Absolutely. build. Yeah. So, Bueller, did you want to mention, I guess, anything? Like, I guess, uh, anything about the Browns Gas Torch that we're that uh, you know, hopefully, at uh, Veritas Pasnia soon. Um, I guess that you're you're kind of uh, prototyping. Well, uh, yes. Once I get the torch going, um, I I, I want to use it, you know, for uh, for the flame fusion gem creation process uh, because I've seen how on even in uh, Nighthawk he also has a video where he creates rubies where you can create rubies and sapphires using a Brown's gas torch. And uh, it's um, it seems like the better the torch, the bigger the ruby. So I'm going to try to start out with uh, an electrolyzer that can produce a lot of gas to power a large torch that can have a lot of power and make larger gems. Yeah, I'm glad you bring up the ruby part and stuff. Like, uh, Keshi has talked about that a lot, and I've seen others uh, do it too with uh, this electrolysis process. And really, I need to get uh, a couple of signal generators and um, Variax to, to further the experiments to get to the whole next level of real cold fusion and transmutations. Yeah. Yeah, and I think once you get a signal generator, um, you'll be able to, are, are you planning on using pulse width modulation to apply that to the electrolytic solution? Or what are you, what are you planning on doing with that? Yes, sir. Through the uh, anode and cathode to uh, put in specific frequencies, uh, trying to match the resonant frequencies of uh, metals that I want to transmutate to, as well as I've seen other Others just putting in like the frequencies 432 and the monatomic material actually taking plasmidic form uh, geometric structures and uh, creating some sono luminescence through it, which is just fascinating. Hmm. So I'd like to is that with an of that. EM frequency or a non frequency? Uh, I both see done through both that. Okay, yeah. Um, those are also, I guess, ways to um, catalyze the electrolysis process itself. So it might also increase the efficiency of the device. Oh, a hundred percent it will. And that would be the very first step of uh, working with it to do and to get the optimum Brown's gas hydrogen combination coming off of the reactions, right? And to just be able to mm -hmm. use water to fuel everything as uh, I think it once was. Yeah, it doesn't get much cheaper than that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's crazy. So like, like obviously I mentioned um, in the introduction about how um, like the, this series is all about trying to introduce, you know, our, our Vani podcast audience to all of these, this, it's not just one solution. It's like a dozen or dozens of solutions. Um, and um, I, you know, like we, we've got, uh, you know, like there's a, there's a, there's a magnetic motor back there. Um, there's, there's all sorts, all sorts of, we talked to Scott Huddleston about, uh, you know, his, his, uh, you know, upcoming board. I see that. I love all, it. All sorts, all, all, all sorts of things, but I always come back to hydrogen. Is it like, it's, it's like, it's, it's such, um, um, I don't know. It's, it's, I always come back to it, always come back to it. And talking to Matt, I, I, we talked to Matt Presti from, um, he's a, I guess a, a student of, you know, Walt, the Walter Russell science cosmology. And, um, and he, he explained it perfectly. And I guess it's, he explained it perfectly in that, um, like with the aqua cure machine, um, once it runs, it builds up the sludge. And this sludge, it's not actually decom like de you know, you know, decomposing the the you know the electrodes. Um, it's creating like all of the elements that are within you know the electrodes, stainless steel and et cetera. It's creating those out of you know essentially thin air. So like we've like I and I've heard it and it's not the first time he's heard it before, but we brought up you know like put gold electrodes in there and like if you if if in in, in the words of Matt Presti, if you replicate the pressure condition pressure pressure condition conditions of um, whatever you're trying to make. Um, then you can, yeah, you can, you can actually make it. And it's, it's all, it's, it's all hydrogen creates all the elements and it's, you know, hydrogen electricity, um, hydrogen being in this realm, this electric realm that we live in, um, all the elements are created from it. So it's, it's really, really, once you start, like, I guess, and I don't even have a full understanding of it yet, but, um, it's just like stepping into it. It's like, wow, hydrogen's really significant. It, it's the building blocks and it's, uh, the endothermic, um, opposite implosive side of energy and the universe and the structure that uh, is so key to this hydrogen aspect of it. So here's a picture of that same uh, device I was showing that was frozen outside there. You can see all the bubbling coming off uh, the top left corner there. The hydrogen, uh, while it's active, here it is at the uh, bottom corner there. Um, and here's uh, Je Jeremiah's uh, hydrogen to helium. Uh, star in the jar. The star in the jar, right? When it's in that white plasmatic state. And that see a, a little bit of white right there, but uh, the red orange, it's not quite hot enough plasma. You have to get it to that white uh, pure plasmatic uh, plasma arc. And then, right, like uh, this, the science of sound between the 432, 440, just uh, in general, the cymatics and that what I've seen with cymatics being put into the electrolysis reactions, it's uh, absolutely uh, incredible. And that it, I've witnessed, I've seen several videos of a couple people doing it. I uh, haven't been able to find the videos since YouTube, uh, terminated my original channel hopefully one day i'll get it back and hopefully it'll still be in my saved collection but i uh, can't find it for the life of me anymore but it was literally creating sono aluminescence just by putting in a couple of uh into the colloidal silver and colloidal gold monoatomic gold manufacturing production of the electrolysis uh, and right here we've got the electron orbits of uh, hydrogen atom, and uh, mm -hmm. then we have the electron cloud of a uh, hydrogen atom, and the good old uh, Walter Russell periodic table uh, or vortex space to spiral periodic table mm -hmm. of octaves and it's, it's so essential and it just makes so much more sense in chemistry and understanding uh atoms and just it's insane the geometry and structure of creation and elements and the building blocks and it all comes off of hydrogen and mm -hmm. where is the one oh no it's this one, but oh, can we see it? Here we go. Uh, we only get a little bit of it as they don't have it as an overlay, only an underlay. Uh, the hydrogen atom uh, electron field 
of uh, energy and it's just, it's crazy the dimensional proportions of the geometry of the energy of hydrogen and how it's where light and sound turn into matter, I guess, right? Because it's like you're taking the photon into, uh, it's, it's everything. All right, so I got a little sidetracked. Yeah, the, the uh, oh, right. atoms and uh, electrons, they can take on different shapes. The different layers of electrons can take on different orbital shapes depending on a lot of different factors but one element like gold can have a lot of different shapes yeah like purple gold that uh we've created and that uh it seems to turn into quite frequently uh off this monatomic material and uh jeremiah and esoteric gold uh through the chemical process have also created this purple gold and uh it's while it's still in the metal metallic state it's uh just so crazy the different the potential of these metal materials and what they really are and what the ancients understood about it and used them for right Interesting yeah. how the stuff floats Most at definitely. the top of the one jar, even though it's like metallic elements. Yeah, right? Like, look at them right there. Boom. Actually, let's take a look back at that. Uh, now you can see that there's like a separate layer uh, of bubbles forming there on the top, like uh, about a centimeter or an inch, or maybe a couple of inches between the rest. Um, it's like the foam, it's now the foamy um, amino acids that uh, are being created. Trying to get a better look at it. Uh, it's not focusing. Okay, so you've got a couple inches thick of a layer going there. Yeah, exactly. How would and, modern science explain that? <laughs> oh, it just doesn't want to focus. Uh, yeah, that one's... About an inch. So that's the cathode side that it's bubbling up on the right hand side there. Uh, doesn't really oxidize too much strangely no some parts of it look pretty clean yeah so pretty much all of that now is the foam from the top and that's about the foam on uh, that one from putting in the biological material and then the monoatomics are in this area. And then this area is the exclusion zone that always forms at the very base. And you can see also an exclusion zone on this one right there too at the bottom a bit. And... Like this one's producing a fair amount of hydrogen consistently.
Mm -hmm. And there's the one that uh, the material we had harvested earlier. So generating a way to generate hydrogen without even an electrolyte, like as an actual even external electrolyzer, just using yeah, I guess like what you're the, the, the differential in the in the glass jar or differential in the salt water jar from the copper coils, so right? Really, yeah. just, just that little differential wasn't is enough to. Wow. Yeah, this camera is not doing it justice. Let's see. If, yeah. Yeah, you can see stuff moving around in there. It's a little better, yeah. See, yeah, I, I could see it before, but now I can see, you know, like five, six times more. Yeah, there's there's definitely stuff moving. Uh, nope, not swears. Oh, Liz and that Bert. Oh, good. lost Bert. Ernie's still up. Oscar's <laughs> down. Um, let's see, maybe this guy? No. Oh, maybe yeah, there more. You yeah, there's definitely something happening in there. There we go. See a little better. Yeah, everything that's flying up is being taken up by the hydrogen. And the very coils, you can almost see the. constant movement up there you go yeah now it's showing it there's both mm -hmm. big bubbles that appear and shoot up and then there's a constant stream of the tiny little uh atomic hydrogens also coming up off of it is this with the five volt current yeah it's just with the five volt current okay and uh, sea salt and tap water. Interesting. Like, uh, can you guys hear like the bubbling and the popping at all from the amount of uh, gas coming off of it or not really? I've got my audio down to avoid feedback through the mic. So yeah. No, not really. I, I don't think it's capturing it or doing it justice, but I'm I'm sure I'm sure you can hear I can hear fermentation in my kefir happening, so I'm sure that's making it's making some noise. Yeah, it may just not be able to be picked up by the mic. Thankfully, not picked up by the microphone. Or yeah, no doubt, actually. <laughs> just a constant bubbling. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's like this is a scent what I'm guessing most of is atomic hydrogen, and then the difference between it, H4, uh, HHO, and what is known as Brown's gas, and the differences between them and what they can be used for. And going back to Walter Russell, uh, one of his biggest achievements was transmutations in uh, vacuum tubes with different noble gases and uh, that putting uh, this sort of hydrogen gas into those reaction 
or tubes, mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure you'd get much better reactions and possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. I've also recorded on uh, like higher speed uh, cameras occasionally coming off of the anode side these shooting bubbles uh which i predict are like a type of oxygen compound i'm guessing but when they shoot out of the water they or so they literally shoot out of the water in a more condensed form but you can see them moving faster than the human eye can perceive and that uh, they go straight up and out every single time and that like they're literally shooting out of the water uh, from below the water off of the anode and that uh, just blows my mind every time because it's like what the heck is going on like ultra fast oxygen bubbles yeah like the like little UFO thingies going like pew pew or EVOs, I guess they'd be called exotic vacuum objects, but ah. they're yeah. not in a vacuum. Right. Uh, I've actually got a video recording of it up on uh, my Crypto Alchemist channel. Uh, I'd play it now, but uh, it lags and then you can't actually see the. Uh, effects that i'm describing so you have to actually just watch the video independently makes sense yeah sure. and then also like this constant structure here and explain like how this layer is just separated from the bottom like it's it's a full yeah. full exclusion zone of its own ev thing and that uh i've gotten a lot of these reactions when in bigger containers uh with some of my specific coils that uh they'll create these layered alternating layers between the monoatomics and the exclusion zones all the way up uh usually in like sets of three sixes and nines Oh, wow. And yeah, another connection I want to try to do is eventually with these little coil guy units to create something that uh, will power an LED light uh within like that size of like container sort of thing i guess of the coils Mm. connected with uh the zinc and aluminum of course yeah it's funny um scaling up is kind of scaling down um when, when you're trying to scale up, I guess, you know, when you're scaling up, it's scaling down to sizes like that or smaller crystal power cells or something. It's funny, but just something that comes to mind. When you scale up, you scale down. Exactly. The uh, fractal nature of the micro to macro. Yeah, boggles the mind like a lot of the stuff that I've heard tonight and from from sky Huddleston and george wiseman folks like that it's just yes yeah, take some it, it, it yeah i'll I'll, to, I'll I'll re i'll re-listen and re, re-watch this um you know putting out for the podcast feed and and, the, and, and such but yeah it, it's it definitely takes some digesting this is oh stuff. absolutely like i usually have to just from editing it forces me by like re-watching the episodes like three to four times and it's like uh mm-hmm. you I've learned something every time that uh, is crucial that uh, you don't pick up the first or second, you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. there's just so much uh, within it. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's interesting to see how small those crystal batteries have gotten that the Hutchinson's made. That one was like smaller than a penny and it was putting out like a couple volts. So it was insane. Exactly. And yeah, we've been talking to them more about uh, how to replicate that, different ideas about it and doing like folding layers. And uh, it's, we've got some stuff in the works that uh, it's going to be an awesome epic year and glad to connect with both of you, Shane and Shane. And uh, I love the Bitcoin too, brother, like decentralized currency and Bitcoin's uh, been recovering thanks to the banking crisis. <laughs> yes yes certainly and, and, I, and i do want to emphasize for the bonnie podcast listeners especially you know long time long time bonnie podcast listeners when they hear gold and silver they think you know like store of value well i think we need to start changing our or changing our definition of what store of value means especially with the advent of things like crystal power you know crystal power cells um i mean obviously it seems like the, the currency of this realm is energy so um with it so i i, I just i envision you know like in a couple of, you know just sometime in the future like you want you aren't trading currents anymore. Like you're you might be trading crystal power cells. Like, hey, here's two years of power. Like exactly, um, right? it's it's kind of the same thing. So like I I, I don't know. I, I I see a lot of a lot of pension in a lot of areas. Um, especially with like hydrogen hydrogen and browns gas like I've been talking about. But also like the crystal power cells, even on smaller applications, like they they don't have to do that much to be like um a huge liberator um and you know for a homestead or for whatever it doesn't matter um there's like the, the crystal power cells like on a small application are, are, are a big deal for sure exactly and that's uh the next episode i'm going to be doing is turning uh making several of them and start hooking some stuff up to them and with each one we make it's one last thing uh, that's being powered by coal or nuclear or oil and the current inefficient system and uh and definitely green crystal free yes and and the other point i wanted to make on on on, on the line of that is you're using actual like gold and silver like gold like well, i think you mentioned like 700 gold you know gold piece <laughs> like this is why i love yeah. monoatomics is that like you, you put your money where your mouth is if this was not legit it's you wouldn't go spend your money on what you're doing hell. it's expensive as hell yes but so, I um, so, real gold so that's so that's like it's like yes. i'm the only idiot out there that is taking physical gold and turning it into powder but like it's not worthless but at the same time it's like well, there is a process to reverse it, but, you know, you're using it for things and it seems like it's for health, too, because that six foot lettuce and, uh, you know, I've been drinking the waters for a decade. I'm 37. I'm pretty healthy. Uh, never got no jab, was exposed to the virus like over 50 times, never caught it once. Uh, you know, like it uh, seems to be working, so. We're going to do extensive, extensive tests with it uh, over this year and agriculture. And also to test the diatomic waters on plants and see if it affects uh, them negatively or positively. But regardless, don't t even touch this material. So this stuff is so right. dangerous, the blue oxidized, because it's on a nano scale that you just absorb, touching it with your fingers, it will absorb in right and you will skin. instantly yeah. start accumulating this heavy toxic metal poisoning. That is why this stuff mm -hmm. is so dangerous and why it has to be taken with full respect, understanding and only professional like uh, lab usage uh you know or like safety equipment uh when you're talking, using it and never consuming the mm -hmm. oxidized toxic byproducts mm -hmm. certainly certainly so um yeah i guess we've been going for quite a long time on i guess on the on the, on the podcast right, end. Uh, and i want to emphasize yeah, I, I want to emphasize for for our audience, you know, big into Bitcoin and Monero. If you want to send uh, send Bernie a donate a Bitcoin or Monero donation to help him do these experiments, expensive is it's expensive. Like you're using gold and silver. That's why, mm -hmm. like, if you're, you're putting your money where your mouth is, and I and I appreciate that as as you know as, as, anyone, as anyone anyone would. So, 
um yeah that like this is this is huge for um for all sorts of areas whether you know wellness energy whatever it is um it's 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 definitely definitely super important all of all of these things so um i, I guess um we I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure we could we could keep going for a couple hours I'll, I'll but, give one uh, last yeah. uh, testimony that i have actually consumed a couple grams of the physical monoatomic gold itself and that uh it was i was awake for like two and a half days i didn't need to eat i was getting memories of like when i was a toddler and like a child and all sorts of stuff coming back to me and then i after that i fell asleep i slept for a day and then i had caught a common cold for like a, or like flu or something like a sore throat and a cough for like a day or two and then was like back to normal but it was like it gives you this crazy rush connection and then well if you keep feeding it then it's only going to grow and grow and the properties are going to become better and better but it's like oh no then you cut it off so it crashed your whole immune system and everything oh, man. like that and right and it's like it's the only time i have gotten sick in like the last 10 years when it's like after that uh um the next uh, couple of days crashing and whatnot and it was quite quite interesting mm -hmm. yeah well bernie we'll have to we'll have to um i mean we'll have to get you back on the podcast again to talk more about electric culture because i want to go like we wouldn't give that the the respect that it needs and we're doing yeah. an electro culture series and uh, the year of the coil series. So we will definitely have Shane and Shane back for all of them and uh, have to do an episode with uh, you guys and Mike uh, from Faraday Research and all of his Adams Motor, Don Smith stuff, uh, Gerald, who's uh, been in the chat, as well as Daniel Foster and uh, his coils, and uh, especially Jeremiah as well. And, oh. Uh, yes. Get these We're big technologies fan. developed and uh, the communities connected and uh, the generations going, you know, more, more free green energy for all. Yes, and, and, and it's funny, I'll mention just one more one more synchronicity before we, we hop before we close this out i um I, I i decided in january to do this breakthrough energy series and one of the reasons was to get sky huddleston connected with like the apec folks because um sky is working on a project that could bring a lot of energy like basically bringing nuclear power to like to a size of a parking lot very cheaply and efficiently so like for for anti gravitic experiments it's that's important so i was like you know like it'd be good to connect them well sure enough when i reached out to jeremiah they'd already connected like a week before um so like that right. already been done and now we're rolling um so i i don't know it's 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 good um there's there's so much happening like as i know you're you're um you're well aware of um but i'm seeing there's so many connections um and to, to bring in another one dutch sense um i came across him in 2014 um and i started my, my first radio right. show in 2015 on the freedom phalanx radio network dutch sense with a coast on there back in those days um so like i've been following him and i never expected him to pop up in this in this area but um you know there he is so it's like um everything's coming full circle you know it seems like it, it, i don't know it's at least my, my perspective i i couldn't agree more and shout out to yeah. Dutch. that's we're gonna be doing another one soon and like absolutely epic genius can't wait to connect him jeremiah and uh jeremy reese together and tomorrow, uh, myself, Jeremy Reese, and Andrea Sirtis with Walter Bosley. And we're going to be going deep into the UAP UFO phenomena technology and uh, all the rest of it. So on that note, it was awesome, Shane and Shane. Uh, it would be a shame if I didn't share your... Uh, webs or your youtube channel one last time so it is liberty under attack um where the heck is the screen here we go there it is liberty under attack and in the live chat make sure to go over and subscribe right here kaboom love you all Because that's really the issue that we're dealing with with these, you know, 
ghost phones, ghost pads, whatever, is that there's no way that you can organize with, with other people and have these distributed tribes if you have a snitch in your pocket all the time. Mm -hmm. People are literally wearing wires all the time. They have a snitch in their pocket and they're trying to do clandestine things. That's never going to work. You know, I'm focused on this project now because I really see how the unfettered flow of communication is what really has prompted this, you know, shift in consciousness. And that if this does, if this can't continue this way and people can't communicate freely with each other, then all the dis distributed networks that have formed um, aren't going to be very effective and they're not going to, uh, they're not going to be able to do what they could do. Um, if you can't communicate, especially when you're basically part of a dispersed tribe at this point, if you can't communicate without being monitored, it basically hamstrings anything, you know, anything going forward. Step up your privacy and order a ghost phone today. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone, again libertyunderattack.com forward slash ghost phone. And make sure to keep a lookout for more ghost pads, privacy tools, freedom boxes, and more. Libertyunderattack.com is the website. Liberty Under Attack Publications. Share your story, find your freedom, 